Hi, in this video I'd like to share with you five tips in less than five minutes each that will help you create fun professional designs for your nonprofit organization. Hi, I'm Hadass and I'm a community manager at Canva and I'd like to share with you my tips and tricks. If you're a nonprofit organization or work for one and have not yet joined our exclusive Facebook community called Canva for Nonprofits, you are most welcome to join our 16,000 professional nonprofits that are already there. You'll find the link to join in in the description below. So, are you ready? Let's go. Tip number one upload your own font into Canva. One important thing to know about uploading a font is that you must have a pro account. To do so you have two options you can either do this from your editing page or go to your home page and click on brand kit in this case i'd like to show you how we can do this from the editing page straight to our design all i have to do is click on my text box and then go to the fonts menu up here click on that and then you will scroll down and see that you have this option to upload a font once you click on that you will be redirected to your brand kit. Here you will just click on upload a font and then you will just be redirected to wherever you saved your downloaded font. I'll click on mine and then you will get this pop-up window that you'll have to confirm the following things that you acknowledge that you own this font and you have the right to use it for your intended purposes. So I'll just click on yes, upload away and it will just take a few seconds and my file will be uploaded. Now here's a nice pop-up that I'm very happy that happened. You have to know that if you downloaded the font as a zip file, you will have to unzip it before you upload it to Canva. So let me just take care of that. Okay, so I unzipped it and now it's uploading my font and I will see it down here under my uploaded fonts. Do notice that the three file types that Canva supports are OTF, TTF, and WOFF. And now I can either add it to my brand fonts if I wish. There it is. And let's go back to the design and see where we can find it. You can find it right here under your brand fonts as the uploaded fonts. All I have to do is click on it and there you go. Super simple. Tip number two, use clickable links in your design. Some things I want you to know in advance. A link will be clickable only in the following file types, PDF, presentation, and a website. You can turn any object to be clickable. It could be an element, a photo, a background, a video, a sticker, you name it. Now let's see how simple it is. Let's say, for example, I want this little text box here that says tickets available at reallygreatsite.com to be my clickable link. All I have to do is go up here to this link feature, click on that, and type in the URL. I recommend you copy and paste the exact URL from your website or anywhere else you want to direct people to so you don't accidentally miss a symbol or a note while typing. This can happen. Once you do that, you click on apply. Now, how do people know that this is clickable? The best way to be is to add some kind of call to action. It can either be by typing manually, click here for example, or you can go to elements and search for the word click and then you get a bunch of icons and stickers that you can add to your design. For example, I'll do this. And this can draw my audience's attention to this clickable link. Another thing I can do is perhaps take this clickable link, I'll copy that, and instead of having this text box, I can delete it. I can add this button, click here, and maybe edit it a little bit so it can pop out. I'll change the colors just to make it more vibrant and then I can have this button also be clickable. I will just go back to the link, paste my URL, click on apply and that's it. People that would click on this button or on this text box will be redirected to my website. 
Once you download and share your design as a PDF, a presentation, or a website, you're good to go. Tip number three, real-time collaboration. Let's see how easy it is. I have this template I want to work with my co-designer, which is not near me. So I'll just go up here to the share tab and I can either pick her from my team members or just type in her email account and send her a message. So for this matter, I have her on my team. And once I type in her name, I can find her right here. So I'm just going to pick her and make sure that you choose can edit as an option. You can add up to 50 members on the same design. I can also add a message, which is optional. And now I will click on send. Now, if she's on my team, she will see this in the shared with you tab. If she's not, she'll receive a message on her email account. So now you see I have her profile up here. This means that she has accepted my invitation and she has joined my design. Now let's see what happens once she adds something to the design. I am supposed to see this happening in real time. There it is. She added the spaceship and I have this indication that shows me exactly which one of my team members has added this design. Now I can send a comment or ask her to do something by clicking on my design and then clicking on this little bubble, add a comment. Now let's ask her if she can do something with a title. Can you change the color of the title? Once I click on comment, she will see that after two, three seconds and she can reply back. And there it is. Yes, she can. Now let's see what she's going to do. Now let's reply. I like it. Once we're done, I can just click right up here on resolve and close this comment box. Now we can keep on designing this and once we're done, that's it. This is our real time collaboration. Super easy, super fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Tip number four, use folders to keep everything neat and tidy. Let's start with the home screen. You will see on the left side menu, you have a tab called all your folders. Once you click on that, you can see all your folders that you already made, or you can create new folders. At the moment, you can see I have only three, but let's go ahead and see how we add some new. One thing important to know is if you have a pro account, you have an unlimited amount of folders that you can create. If you have a free account, then you are limited to only two. To create a new folder, we will just go to the right top tab and click on create new folder. Once I click on that, I can name my folder as I'd like. Let's say for example, the team. And then I can choose if I would like to share this folder with any of my team members or anyone else, or I can just create the folder without sharing. Let's do that. Once I click on create folder, I get my new fresh folder. Now inside my folder, I can create some subfolders. Let's see what we have at the top right corner. I have the option when I click on three dots to rename my folder or delete it. I can click on this and create a subfolder. Let's say for example, my subfolder would be the volunteers and click on create folder. I can upload directly here some designs, photos, videos, audio, whatever I'd like. And then I can just choose all my photos and open them straight from my computer and have them uploaded in my subfolder. I can also choose to share this straight from here. I'll just click on that and then I can pick whoever it is I want to share this with. Now let's see how we can start designing with photos that we uploaded into our folder. Let's say, for example, I would like to use this photo in my design. One option is to just click on the photo and then I can choose either to download it to my computer, which I don't need to, or use in a design. If I use this in a design, this will automatically open up. I can resize this to the size I want and start designing. Another option would be I'll go back to the home page and start a design under create a design. Let's say we want to create an Instagram post. I'll just click on Instagram post. Let's say I pick this template. I can just go straight ahead to my folder and use the photos I uploaded there. I will just have to go to the left black menu, scroll down to folders, 
search for my folder I can either scroll down or type in the name in the search bar and then I can see the photos I uploaded let's just drag this and once I'm done with my design I can save this straight from here back into my folder or any other folder I will just have to name my design first let's say volunteers January 2021 and now I'll just click on the file menu scroll down to save to folder and here I can choose any folder that I already have or even create a new one from this window let's go to the team folder then I can pick my subfolder or even create a subfolder as well and once I click on that I just click on save and this is automatically saved into my folder super easy neat and organized now one more important thing if you want to star your folder you need easy access to it let's go back to the home screen and see how easy it is to star your folder let's just go and pick our folder from the left I'll click on all your folders and choose my folder and you can see that I have a little star next to my folder's name all I have to do is click on it it turns to yellow and then it means it is starred you can then find it very easily on the left menu right underneath here and then every time you log into your account you will automatically see it on your home page right here tip number five share your design as a website congratulations you finished designing your annual report and now you can publish it as a website well, with Canva, it's super easy and I want to show you how. If your annual report looks anything like this on an A4 or any other lettering format, we want to resize it to a website dimension. In order for us to do that, we will just click on resize at the top blue bar and then we are just going to search for website. Once we find that, we're just going to check mark and click the website and we have two options. One is to resize the current design and the other is copy and resize. I recommend you always pick copy and resize because you don't want to change this current design. So let's keep it safe and choose copy and resize. Then Canva will just give you a new tab with the website dimensions. Now, as you can see, this is not a perfect match. We have to make a few minor adjustments. So this will take only a few minutes of your time and you can make the adjustments needed. So I'll just fast forward and show you what I did. So this is what it looks like after I made a few adjustments. So I have all my pages here. And now the first most important thing you wanna do is name your design, your website. So let's just go to the top blue bar and I'm just going to delete this copy of and name my website 2020 annual report. The second thing you wanna do is name each and every single page. The name that you give your page is actually going to be the tab on your navigation bar. So you can give it any name you'd like. I'll just name this home and my second page will be about and my third one will be performance once I did that I can start publishing my website let's go to the top bar on the right you have these three dots I'm going to click on that and I have my website option you can also go right ahead and click on publishes website what you have here is a preview window and you can see exactly how your website is going to be viewed by your audience we have four options of web styles let's click on this menu and go through each and every one the first one is presentation style I'll click on open website to show you exactly what it will look like so it will look like a presentation and my audience will just have to click on this arrow so they can navigate between the pages very simple very easy to use my second option would be scrolling scrolling is a single page site with a parallax effect let's take a look at that and now you can see that I have the same page but this time I do not have to click but to scroll down and then I get a preview of all my pages my third option is called classic navigation this is actually a combination of multi-page site with a navigation bar. So now you can see the pages and a navigation bar at the top 
and these are actually the names that I gave each page. So once I click on home, this is what I see, and I click on about and performance, and then I get all the information. On the left, you can see the name that we gave our design, which is the name of our website. My fourth and last option is standard. Standard is a single page site with a navigation bar, a different kind of combination. Let's click on that and you can see that I still have the navigation bar at the top and this time I can also scroll down so I have both options. So you pick your own option and once you do that, all you have to do is, once you open your website, copy this link up here and then just share it with anyone you'd like. If it's too long, you can shorten it or you can add it as a link to any of your other designs. Now, some things you should know about a website. All your links will be clickable, so don't worry about them. You can add links. Music and videos will play, and there is no need to host it anywhere or have any experience in web developing. How easy was that? That's it. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget, if you're a nonprofit organization or work for one, you're welcome to join our exclusive Facebook community. You'll find the link in the description below. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.